Welcome back to the three months of modal logic, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with November's focus on temporal logic, looking at complete temporal logic. This is going to be the last kind of axiomatic system we're looking at before we add any more tense operators to our systems, and we're going to call it RT. So... Let's pause for a second and talk about completeness, because this is a new property of the binary relation of precedence that we didn't talk about at all earlier. Once again, like well-ordering, completeness is a kind of property that cannot be expressed in first-order logic. And so we're going to need to express it in our own way here. Here's an explanation of what completeness is. For a timeline to be complete, that means that for any set of instants that is defined by an instant that all moments in the set are before, must be able to be defined by an instant that all moments in the set are before, which is also a moment of the original timeline. That sounded very confusing and probably didn't make a lot of sense. So let's dig into it. The best way to understand this is in terms of types of numbers. So of the types of numbers we've looked at, natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and real numbers, rational numbers are the only ones that are not complete. Okay? Basically, a set can be defined as having kind of an upper bound, a highest point that is not within that set, and that set cannot be defined by some upper bound that is in fact within the set. Once again, we might be confusing right now, but we're going to give some examples. So, natural numbers. Imagine we define a subset of the natural numbers as all natural numbers that are less than 4.5 and greater than 1. It's going to be the set of 4, 3, and 2, assuming we're talking about exclusive. So even though we have now defined its upper bound with a number that is not a natural number. So that's the first piece of this. We've defined the upper bound, the highest point you can get to, by a number that is not within the set. So we have 4.5 is not a natural number. It's a decimal and it's not within our set of natural numbers. However, we can define the same set of natural numbers by saying the numbers that the natural numbers that are less than 5 and greater than 1. It defines the same set of numbers and both 5 and 1 are within our set of natural numbers. The point here is we can always define any subset of the natural numbers as being bounded by other natural numbers okay there's no point we're going to get to where we have some set of natural numbers that can't be defined as being in some way bounded by other natural numbers all right since we'll always be able to define our natural numbers in terms of natural numbers the natural numbers and for the same reason the integers are going to be complete but now rational numbers are not going to be complete. Take the set of all rationals that are greater than 3, we can define 3 in terms of rational numbers, but less than pi. If you don't know, pi is something called an irrational number. That means that pi itself cannot be expressed as a fraction. It can't be expressed as a ratio. So pi is not included in the rational numbers because it's a decimal that goes on forever and doesn't repeat, there's no way we can create a fraction of it. So it's not a rational number. Now, the set of rationals that is in between 3 and pi is going to include numbers like 3.1, 3.14, 3.141, 3 3.14159, 3 and so on. But no rational number that will be the upper bound. So, there's no way we can define this set of rational numbers only by using other rational numbers. There's no way we can get that top bound, that highest point, 
only with other rational numbers. Since pi is not rational, and the rational numbers less than pi are forever going to approach it, getting closer and closer to pi, but never reaching it, and never approaching some rational number that's just slightly less than pi, there's going to be no way to redefine this set in terms of only rational numbers. This means that completeness will be an addition to the QT system, whose instants only correspond to rational numbers. QT is dense, but it's not complete. It has cuts or gaps in it where things like irrational numbers would fit. Real numbers include these irrational decimals like e, square root of 2, and pi. Therefore, the reals are complete because they aren't going to have the cuts or gaps since there's no way to express an upper bound of reals that is not itself a real number. Our new system RT will correspond to the real numbers since it is complete like the natural numbers, but it is dense like the rational numbers. Okay? Our temporal completeness axiom is a little confusing, and we're not going to right now go through a proof of why this demonstrates that our timeline is complete, because it would take us far off track. For now, if you want to look up proofs on it, check it out yourselves, but just understand that this is generally taken to be some thing that shows that a timeline, if we take this as one of our axioms, is complete. Basically, it says that for all moments, past, present, and future, it has always been the case that P implies at some point in the future it will have been the case that P. Then, if it has always been the case that P, it will always be the case that P. Adding this axiom to QT will provide us with RT, it will provide us with a timeline whose instants correspond to the real numbers instead of just the rational numbers, and it will end us with a timeline who is complete. All right, next up we're going to do a quick review video where we're going to look at all of the different varieties of axiomatic systems in temporal logic before we add on some new predicates. Watch a new video every single day for three months here at Carnades.org with the three months of modal logic. And stay skeptical, everybody.